And biologists say all that vegetation should help fish production over the next few years. So you might think I'm standing on ice, but I'm not. I'm standing in a puddle of mud. But behind me is exit 141 on Interstate 75. And from where I'm standing, you can see some standing water. Right now, it's still water. But officers, agents, and deputies from multiple different agencies in Tennessee were looking for Wilson, and they found him this morning in South Blount County. They are not supportive of this hire here on campus. There are about 75 to 100 students Madison, Knoxville police say three children were inside. They don't specify their ages or whether they witnessed the shooting or simply in another part of the house when the shooting happened. In nine months, Chris Stapleton will rock these stands. But long before he rose to the top of the country charts, Stapleton was a common figure at Knoxville's more intimate venues. Chris Stapleton's played the Bijou in Knoxville uh, many times for the last several years. Uh, to very strong crowds, you know. Ashley Cap started promoting concerts in Knoxville in the late 70s. He's since built AC Entertainment into a major player in the live music scene across the Southeast. So watching artists come into a theater like the Bijou, grow to the Tennessee, and then uh, grow often beyond that is amazing. But Stapleton is far from the only artist to go from Knoxville's smaller venues to the arena level. Tim Reese has been the director at Thompson Bowling Arena since 1987. One artist's growth that stands out in his mind is Garth Brooks. The first five gigs in the career, one of them is Ella Garouz. It's a club out of Knoxville. Ella Garouz, that was Ashley Cap's first venue. And he played, you know, Ella Garouz, and then he played uh, WIVK there, and then he sold out five shows in Thompson Bowling Arena a couple years ago. So. Once acts get to the arena level, booking a show in a medium-sized market is often all about timing. So what secondary tertiary markets like ours need to be able to do is to present a venue that makes sense for them, that uh, they know that it's a relatively easy day to come in, do their stuff, a pretty good opportunity to get out, and uh, then kind of roll on to the next city. There were already 5,000 acres protected in the Obed Wild and Scenic River, but it's a tract of 161 acres recently donated that has Chief Ranger Matt Hudson excited. It's one of the most spectacular parts of the park, some of the highest cliffs, some of the, the most well-known rapids are right there next to it. Melton Mill Falls is the most visited part of the park, but Hudson says the new addition has an even larger waterfall. And the biggest draw of this area is its white water and the cliffs along the gorge. The awesome thing about the, this area here is that even the most simple routes around here, the climbing routes, are like a five-star route in any other area. I mean, Alex Santabanez grew up in Chile, climbing in Patagonia. Since moving to Tennessee a few months ago, he's become a frequent visitor to the cliffs along the Obed. This area is so vast, so I would say there's a life lifetime of climbing in here. It's just wonderful. It's just huge. The Obed has over 400 named rock climbing routes. With the newly donated land opening some of the tallest cliffs in the area, there will be even more to explore as this land expands until all the designated land is protected. And there are still just a few remaining missing pieces here and there to complete the park. And so this was one of the biggest remaining outstanding pieces and definitely one of the most important. Having access to these kind of places and knowing that they're going to serve the next generation is such a peace of mind. It's like you can just come here with that sensation that you belong to this place and this area belongs to you. In the open wild and scenic river, Grant Robinson, Fox 43 News. Uh, I walked a creek one day and found about a dozen in a 300 yard walk and that was, that answered all my questions, that's all I needed to see. Ben Gamble is a hunter. For the last 20 years he's managed property in Morgan County, improving it to be more appealing to deer. Now we're just about back to square one. That's because there's an outbreak of EHD. It's a virus transmitted by a type of midge commonly called noceums. 
Mimi Barnes with TWRA says there are already 32 reports with at least 158 deer dead in Morgan County alone at the beginning of October. You know, the disease has always been around and it kind of pops up here and there and there's no predictor of when it's going to, uh, when there's going to be an outbreak or, or how big the outbreak will be. But the last substantial outbreak was in 2007. Gamble says he's seen major differences in deer activity compared to this time last year. We would get on our side beside and take a ride across the, the farms we own and the farms we lease. Sometimes we'd count 100 deer. Uh, this time this year, we'd be lucky if you saw one deer. Fortunately, the outbreak should end soon with colder temperatures on the way. The midge that carries disease in its larval form is in waters and the midge actually will die with, um, with cold, the onset of cold weather. But even when the outbreak ends, for sportsmen like Gamble, the damage has already been done. It's just heartbreaking to see everything that you saw coming to life in the spring within a two-month period died. Everything you worked for for 20 years in two months died. <laughs> we couldn't wait. After two years looking at a barren lake, Bob Olson finally fished his favorite spot. You think it's going to come up that no, much more? I don't know. But after two years of Chilhowee returning to its former course as the Little Tennessee River, both fishermen and fisheries biologists are anxious to see how the lake was affected. The water is concentrated into a river channel, basically, and the fish are in turn concentrated into that same river channel. So uh, predation likely increased, and the, the bigger fish probably really enjoyed that because the smaller fish didn't have a place to hide, basically. So. Now fewer fish spread out across more water, and the TWRA expects anglers to have a tougher time. But this weekend, anglers embraced the challenge. We really don't know. <laughs> Just keep our fingers crossed because we don't know what's left in here for fish. But the drawdown also has its benefits. You know, early on, uh, reservoirs are very productive because there was so much vegetation, you know, all the trees and the grass and everything that was growing there. That gets flooded. It decays and it puts a lot of nutrition in the water for several years there. So, After two years of sunlight shining on the exposed lake bottom, a lot of plant growth came back. And biologists say all that vegetation should help fish production over the next few years. TWRA will survey the fish population in the lake and restock over the coming months. But in the meantime... We just want to get back out there, see if the eagles are still there, you know, and... Uh, we're going to try our hand at fishing, see what happens, but that's not the most important thing today. It's just getting back out on the lake. In Blount County, Grant Robinson, WBIR 10 News.